Hello and welcome. Today I'd like to introduce you to Para, the organizing system that I rely on to handle all of my knowledge throughout my entire digital existence. <laughs> I have found significant benefits from implementing this system both personally and professionally. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how it works and why I believe it can benefit you too. But why should you give me your attention for the next 15 minutes or so? Because we're all facing a pressing issue in today's professional landscape of information overload. The average person is bombarded with a mind-boggling 34 gigabytes of data every single day. That's like trying to read a whopping 174 full-size newspapers just to keep our heads above the data deluge. In this rapidly advancing world of technology and the ever-expanding realm of artificial intelligence, more and more of us are finding ourselves transitioning into knowledge workers where we must navigate an immense digital ocean of information. As automation takes over routine tasks, it's the expertise and the creativity of us, the knowledge workers, that will propel innovation, it will solve complex problems, and it will shape the future. Effective information organization has morphed from being merely a valuable task to an absolute necessity for thriving in this knowledge-driven era. And I'm not alone in this struggle to efficiently locate information I already possess. According to a 2012 Microsoft report, the average employee spends over nine hours each week searching for and gathering information, totaling a staggering 468 hours each year in pursuit of information we already have. My journey to tackle this issue has been extensive and time consuming. However, the pursuit to effective information organization actually predates the digital age by centuries. This quest can be traced all the way back to the brilliant philosopher Aristotle in the 4th century BC. He embarked on a rather ambitious mission to create a universal system for categorizing the vast expanse of human knowledge. And this pursuit has persisted throughout the ages, influencing even Google's mission statement, which aims to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. But Google doesn't provide any assistance to me when it comes to organizing the knowledge that I've amassed through my experiences and education and training and the valuable lessons that I've gained during my 20 year career with the city. So how can we manage all of this digital information? And more importantly, how can we actually put it into use? I believe Pear can be the solution. I'm convinced that we can all benefit from having a slick, efficient method for capturing, organizing, retrieving, and extracting meaningful information from the colossal tidal wave of data crashing into our lives daily. Tiago Forte, the creator and author of Building a Second Brain, just came out with his second book, The Para Method, The Key to Organizing Your Digital Life, which is the central focus of my presentation. His pioneering approach promises to redefine how we manage our digital knowledge. The Para Method builds upon the foundation laid by productivity giants like David Allen in his renowned productivity book, Getting Things Done, where he explains that our brain is meant for having ideas, not holding them. The first step in getting a handle on our personal knowledge is to recognize the importance of ditching the futility of trying to remember a complex set of rules and logic or redoing decisions over and over and over again to store our personal information. The key is to create a workflow that you can repeat every single time. You create a new note, you save a new document, you work on a report or an assignment with your team. And Tiago Forte provides that workflow and the PARA method. His framework follows the four letters of PARA, your projects, areas, resources, and archives. So let's talk more about each one. So projects are short-term endeavors that require multiple work assignments and demand your attention. They have specific goals and they have a deadline to be completed. Your project list is like your digital action center, keeping you focused on what's immediately important and actionable. The key thing to remember about projects is that they're not only important, but also urgent. They're actionable right now. Examples range from completing a web page or crafting a detailed research report or completing a certification course. Each project requires its own set of information. So notes and research, plans and schedules. And it requires a system to track your evolving thoughts and ideas on the outcome and the overall goal. I'll walk you through my current projects folder and how I organize them later in the presentation. So second is areas. These are like ongoing roles or responsibilities with standards that you have to maintain over time. So unlike projects, 
areas never truly get completed. They demand your continuous attention and you can't just check them off the list because they're perpetual. Areas are both important and relevant right now, but they also maintain their significance into the future. While they may not be as action-packed as your projects, they still require your dedication. For instance, work-related areas could include being the HR liaison for your department, or managing the department budget, or performance management for your direct reports. Personal areas of responsibility might include your finances, like keeping track of your taxes, or the upkeep and maintenance of your home and your vehicles. Third, we have resources. These are the repositories of our knowledge that may not have an immediate application, but might become highly useful down the road. Think of them as your just-in-case library catch-all for something else that isn't something you need to keep track of right now for a project or for an area of responsibility. Resources don't demand immediate action. They stand ready to be accessed for future projects or areas if and when the time calls for. Resource examples include reference materials, templates, SOPs, and articles you anticipate needing in the future. Fourth, we have archives. So think of archives as your digital time capsule, preserving anything from the previous three categories that's no longer in active use, but you might want to keep it for future reference. These can be completed or paused projects, areas that have become inactive or irrelevant, or resources that no longer pique your interest. And there you have it. These four categories provide a structured framework for your digital knowledge, making retrieval and management a breeze, all based on relevance and timing. This system is key to maintaining and organizing an efficient personal information management system. Now let me show you how I've organized my notes and files. What's truly beautiful, in my opinion, about this system is its versatility. I have implemented the same folder structure across all of the different applications I use for OneNote, for OneDrive, whether it's my personal matters or my responsibilities here at work. Para is my solution to managing all of my personal digital information, and more importantly, it's the secret sauce that allows me to transform that information into action. So I've been using OneNote for close to a decade as my primary note-taking application. Here is a generated summary of every note I have in my OneNote application. Believe it or not, that is thousands of unique pieces of information that can be easily sorted into four categories, projects, areas, resources, and archives. Tiago suggests putting a number before each category or notebook so that they appear in the order of most actionable to least actionable. And according to Tiago, most people have somewhere between 15 to 25 projects or different goals and outcomes they're actively working toward at any given time. These are my active projects in various stages of completion. Anytime I'm working on one of these projects, it is incredibly helpful to be able to click in one place and have all of the information, the research, and the inspiration in one location. It's kind of like stepping into a chef's kitchen where all the ingredients are meticulously laid out prepped and ready to go whenever I find the time and energy to cook up my project. Now let's take a look at resources. This is where I gather all of the other topics and subjects that have piqued my interest, including highlights and notes from books that I've read, longevity information, cheat sheets, guidance on different applications, crafting, skincare, wellness. It's a mixed bag of diverse information, none of which is particularly actionable at the moment, but instead it's knowledge that I'm amassing to gain a better understanding of these subjects, just in case I wanna turn that understanding into a future project or an endeavor I decide to pursue. I cannot emphasize enough how valuable it is when the time comes to turn this treasure trove of past information and wisdom into something tangible, valuable, or meaningful. No more spending hours hunting for scattered bits and pieces I've come across in the past. It's all neatly centralized in one place. Next is my archives. I think of these as my digital cold storage. There are more entries in this notebook than all others combined, and that's exactly how it should be. Archives house everything from past work roles and old resumes to details about previous homes and cars that I've owned. Who knows if that stuff will ever be relevant again, but if it is, or if a colleague needs guidance on completing a time card, or if I'm ever asked to reach into my records from creating an ADA transition plan, I know exactly where to find that information, securely stored in my archives for safekeeping. So that's my Paris system in OneNote. It's a digital treasure trove of past experiences and knowledge accumulated through my career and post-academic life. This repository of institutional wisdom serves as a springboard for amplifying my current objectives and assignments. 
By tapping into the tacit knowledge I've already developed, Para becomes a potent tool for enhancing my daily efficiency and effectiveness. I now employ the clear and straightforward Para workflow process to capture all new information that resonates with me. Doing so eliminates the need to dredge through the resources of my memory or my mental bandwidth to establish the logic behind saving a particular piece of information that I want to retain. I think of this OneNote repository as the epicenter of my second brain, another concept by Tiago Forte. In this digital platform, I'm able to effortlessly gather information and inspiration from a diverse range of sources. That includes everything from ebooks and podcasts and memorable quotes that I want to remember to thought provoking conversations or meeting minutes or research materials and my personal reflections. The Para Method has truly revolutionized my productivity and output. Its brilliance lies in its adaptability and simplicity, and it can be seamlessly applied across all aspects of work and life. And it doesn't demand an excessive investment of time to implement or to maintain it. This aligns perfectly with Tiago's core message, with the, which he emphasizes in the book. If your organizational system becomes as complex as your life, the effort required to maintain it will eventually consume the time and energy you should be using to fully live your life. So before I wrap up with my one note and conclude this presentation, I want to leave you with some valuable productivity tips and tricks, especially if you're considering using OneNote to organize and manage your personal knowledge. First, let's talk about the search function in OneNote particularly for tracking your to-dos, tasks, and your outstanding actions. With the tagging feature in OneNote, you can easily identify your to-dos, your follow-up questions, and people you need to email, among others. When you want to gather all of these outstanding tasks into one organized list, you can use the search feature. Simply search for the specific tag, and OneNote will crawl through your selected parameters, whether it's a note, or a notebook, or your entire database and provide you with a summary of all of those tasks. If you're using OneNote 2016, there is an additional handy feature where you can actually click the button Create Summary Page, and OneNote will automatically generate a consolidated list of all of these tasks in a note with links to each original note for more in-depth exploration. And there's more. You also have the option to take these to-do items and click the button right here to have them added to your to-do list in your Outlook calendar. This way you'll receive reminders, and when you mark those tasks as completed in your Outlook to-do list, the corresponding item in your OneNote list will also be checked off. A similar feature plays a pivotal role in my meeting note-taking process. OneNote not only offers a wide variety of meeting note templates that can be automatically applied to any new notes within a specific folder by default, but it also grants me the ability to import meeting details directly from my calendar with just a single click. This results in a new note that not only includes any attachments from the calendar item, but also provides a convenient list of the names of all attendees. Once the meeting has concluded, I can seamlessly distribute my meeting notes to all relevant parties using OneNote's email page feature. It's an efficient process that allows me to share essential meeting information with those who need it without the need for me to spend extra time composing a separate email with all the meeting details and I'm able to maintain a meticulously organized repository of all my meeting notes, ensure that I have access to them for future reference if necessary. This streamlined approach significantly enhances my productivity and ensures that important meeting information is readily available when required. I could keep going into even more of these nifty tricks and hacks that I utilize in OneNote, but we'll save that for another day. As I wrap up my presentation on the Para Method, I want to emphasize that if you find yourself regularly sitting in front of a computer, dealing with copious amounts of digital information, whether self-generated or provided by others, or things you need to research and incorporate into your projects and assignments, you stand to gain immensely from implementing the structured Para workflow to organize it all. I genuinely hope this presentation has piqued your interest in this valuable methodology and simple workflow for organizing and managing your personal and professional knowledge. This productivity system I've discussed has been around for a couple years now, and there are a plethora of free resources available online, including blog posts and articles and YouTube videos. And I'm happy to share these resources and links that I've saved in my second brain if anybody asks. And on top of that, I'm more than willing to discuss this subject with anyone who expresses interest. My enthusiasm for these concepts knows no bounds, and I truly and firmly believe that they can benefit anyone looking to enhance their productivity, reduce their mental stress, 
and ultimately elevate the overall quality of their work and life. Thank you for your time and attention today, and I wish you a highly productive rest of your day.